sharper for air and pull it from outside. Down exhaust flues, spewing deadly carbon monoxide fumes into the home. Carbon monoxide poisoning can follow with the whole family suffering flu-like symptoms. Nausea, headaches, dizziness. If you suspect carbon monoxide, especially after adding a fuel-burning appliance, call us. We'll check it out. This Under the Big Sky message brought to you by Bitterroot Furniture. Some of the lessons of business are universal. Just ask University of Montana business professor Paul Larson. I think if people could gain a good understanding of the market, what trends there are, what competitors are doing, and what you have to be do to be successful, um, to me that's a real logical starting point. Doing business takes preparation under the big sky. An exclusive sightings investigation uncovers a classified UFO military tape. It doesn't resemble any shapes that I would know. Why does this UFO have the Air Force running scared? This was my first encounter seeing anything of this nature. Plus, was a Sasquatch shelter discovered in Ohio? It was big enough for three of us to go and sit in comfortably. The Bigfoot mystery continues with more eyewitnesses on the next sightings. Now, Montana's most complete sports coverage with Shane Ettinger. We're down to the final four in college football's 1AA playoffs, and the Montana Grizzlies are right where they want to be. The Grizz just manhandled Georgia Southern this afternoon, blowing by the Eagles 45 to nothing. It's the Grizzlies' first back-to-back -back shutouts in 25 years. Our own Scott Kilberry has a recap of today's big, big win for the Grizz. The largest crowd in Montana football history, over 18,000 folks packed Washington Grizzly Stadium to support the copper and gold in a rematch with a 1989 playoff nemesis, Georgia Southern. And the Grizzlies wasted no time pleasing the home fans, scoring on their opening 77-yard drive, capped off with this four-yard Dave Dickinson pass to Joe Douglas. This set the tempo for the first half as the leading Peyton candidate Dickinson passed for three more scores in the half, the longest coming off this 49-yard strike to Douglas as the Grizzlies took a 31-point lead into the locker room behind Dickinson's 347 first-half passing yards. The home team balanced out its attack on the ground. Freshman Brian Gales gained 97 yards in the second half on 10 carries and a 16-yard touchdown run. But the day belonged to the copper and gold defense. The Eagles' closest threat to scoring was snuffed on the one-yard line after a fumble to post a shutout for the second straight week, winning 44 to zip. It really is. We've played two different types of styles of offense now and done well against both. Uh, they, did, they try to put the pass in there, and we're doing well against that defensively. And offense is still rolling, so uh, gelling is the only word I can think of that can explain what's going on. Our kids played awfully good today. We're very proud of them. I think they, all the effort, all the focus, all the uh, attitude really showed up today. Amazing. It's amazing. I, I just can't believe it. Is it really? Do you feel like the team is like in the, is in a flow that's really rolling now? I, I, mean, I think our team's just rolling. I love it. I mean, we're all coming together. We're all doing what we have to. I think I think the whole team's starting to feel it. It's starting to snowball. It's start, we're starting to peak as a whole team. And now they're in the final four. And if they get an opportunity to play at home in front of this really fine home crowd and home, home field advantage, I think they get, they'll have a great opportunity to uh, go to the title game. The Montana football team is hoping to bring one more game back here in the friendly confines of Washington Grizzly Stadium in front of 18,000-plus screaming Grizzly fans. But then again, at the rate this team is playing, it's not going to matter where the next game is. In Missoula, I'm Scott Kilbury for Montana's news station. Uh, but, Scott, that game will be at home. 45 to nothing. Your final score, Dave Dickinson, 37 to 46 for 408 yards and four touchdowns. The defense held Georgia Southern to 91 total yards. The Grizzlies move on to the semifinals for the second straight year. So who will they meet? Well, let's head out to Boone, North Carolina. Stephen F. Austin taking on Appalachian State. The Mountaineers fired up for this one. It was Stephen F. Austin, though, going ahead early. Damian Valerie rumbling in from nine yards out, and that would put the Lumberjacks up 10 to seven. Stephen F. Austin led 13 to 10 at halftime, but in the third quarter, App State battles back. Scott Satterfield hits Aldwin Lance over the middle. That was good for six, and the Mountaineers would go up 17 to 13, but then late in the fourth quarter, Stephen F. seals the upset. Leonard Harris work, work, working his way into the end zone from six yards out. The Stephen F. Austin Lumberjacks go on to win this one 27 to 17. That means they will be in Missoula next Saturday to take on the Grizzlies. Some other scores today. Marshall beat Northern Iowa in the other quarterfinal 41-24. They will meet McNeese State next week. 
McNeese State all over Delaware today, 52 to 18. While the Montana Grizzly Hoopsters were busy tonight as well, the 16th annual Coca-Cola Classic wrapping up tonight at Dahlberg Arena with the Grizzlies taking on the Fairfield Stags in the championship game. And the Grizz were looking for the triple crown tonight, so to speak. And, the, and they came out thinking three. Chris Boya hitting from behind the arc. The Grizz were up five to two right off the bat. And it seemed as if everybody was thinking, thinking three tonight. The Stags number three, Shane Miller spotting up and hitting the three. And we're tying, it ties the score at five apiece. Then it's Kirk Walker back on top. That's not a three, but it's from the top of the key, and that rhymes, so, you know, it'll work tonight. The Grizz are up 7-5, to five, but then Fairfield's Kyle Commodore hits a three to put the Stags up 10-9. Kind of a theme going here, I think. And then the Grizz come back with one more three of their own. Chris Boya from the corner. Bang. <laughs> that put the Grizz up 12-10. to 10. They were The score was tied 31-31 at halftime right now. Oh, and the fans are loving it, by the way. <laughs> it's 59-43 to 43 with about nine minutes left in the second half. Grizz look like they could be on their way to the championship win. In the consolation game, Western Illinois beat uh, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo 69 to 64. Some other scores, a big upset by the Montana Lady Grizz tonight. 67-65 over Western Kentucky. Skyla Cisco sank two free throws with 4.6 seconds left to seal the win. Greta Koss had 20 points and 14 rebounds. Uh, Sherry Brooks had 14 points. Now the Montana State men lost to Eastern Michigan tonight, and the Montana State women lost to Portland tonight, 70 to 68 in overtime. Well, the girls' high school basketball season wrapped up tonight with the state B and C tournaments going on down in Billings and Bozeman. The Mission Lady Bulldogs looking to take home some hardware tonight against the Baker Spartans. Let's head down to the Magic City. St. Ignatius' Raylin Scammon will flash open down low on the baseline. She sinks the short jumper, and St. Ignatius would go up early in this one. But back would come the Spartans. Carmen Bagley penetrates, dishes, and then spots up to nail the jumper from just outside the top of the key. And Baker would battle back. And then it's the Lady Bulldogs getting two from Shanna Robeson. The nice drive to the hole right there. There's Coach Les Wright. He's, he's thinking we're going to play this game pretty well. Uh, junior Amanda Dvorak with the jumper right there. But it would be Baker going on to win this third and fourth place game tonight, 54 to 34 over the Bulldogs. A nice tournament for the Bulldogs, though, making it to the Saturday night games. In the championship, Malta beat Fairfield 50 to 29. That's a back-to-back -back titles for the, for the Malta MS. In the C tournament, Winifred beat Whitewater in the championship 60 to 40, and Harrison beat Opine 57 to 48. Well, college football's national championship picture cleared up a bunch tonight. Number one, Nebraska will face number two, Florida, in the Fiesta Bowl. Thanks to the Gators' big win in the SEC championship game tonight. Let's head out to the Georgia Dome. Atlanta, Georgia, we go. Uh, the Gators would get out early. Chris Doring with a 22-yard pass to Danny, War or Chris Doring with the 22-yard pass from Danny Warfel. It was 7-3 Florida right off the bat. And then in the third quarter, Ike Hilliard will catch the pass from Warfel. 29 yards out, a nice pretty ball right there. That put uh, the Gators up 24-3 and they would go on to win this one 34-3. to They will play Nebraska in the Fiesta Bowl for the national championship, and we'll wrap things up tonight with the play. And don't look now, folks, but the Butterbean is back. The round mound of boxing renown, so to speak, in action against Louis Monaco. The Butter Boy laying a little bit of lumber on old Louis tonight. No referees getting in the way this time for the Buttermeister. Now, is it Butterbean or Butterball? I don't know. You make the call. But either way, he's the play of the night, so to speak. We also want to Quickly congratulate the Flathead Girls swim team and the Hellgate Boys swim team. They won the Kalispell Invitational Swim Meet today up in Kalispell. So congratulations right. to those two and congratulations to the Grizz. They will be back home one more weekend at least. Well, actually, it's just one more weekend because of the National Championship Games in West Virginia. But, uh, so you think nice they get a good win. chance next weekend? Well, the they way they're the playing home. at home, it's, it's pretty phenomenal. It, they just uh, seem to be dominating just about everybody. All right. We'll be back in a moment. Hello there. I'm Super Handyman Al Carroll. And I'm Michael Holligan of Holligan Homes. We're the host of Your New House. We hope you'll join us each week when we cover the latest in buying and building new homes. Well, plus the fact we're going to cover remodeling and landscaping your own house. Plus, Al's got some great do-it-yourself projects and some home remedies to save you money. And one of the most important things about buying a house is to get a mortgage. We're going to tell you all about the latest in mortgage. You'll be surprised. Sundays at 4 on KPAX Channel 8. Montana's news station. Every morning, Mike Johnston gets up a little earlier to spend some time with his family. You see, last year, the Johnston family was involved in a two-car crash. Mike and his family were the lucky ones. The passengers in the other car weren't. Mike's family were all in their seatbelts, and this year, Mike is going to make sure you are too. In this state, belt enforcement leads to safety. 
You know, I work hard all week, and I can find plenty of things to do in my spare time. But I'm a Shriner because of the things that the Shrine does for the kids of our community. Shriners follow a 66-year tradition of providing the finest medical care at Shrine Orthopedic and Burns Hospital. We help any needy child with absolutely no cost to their family, no insurance, and no government funds. You, too, can add that extra something that will really make a difference in your life and the life of a child. Become a Shriner. Call and find out how. Oh, you're right. Go to the Andersons and call the gas company. Open the windows and don't turn on the lights as it might cause a spark. I'll meet you over at the Andersons. Right. That's 2520 Pine. We'll be outside waiting. Oh, oh. Freezing. Well, it could be the world's largest cookie. The 75-foot-long, 16-foot-wide cookie was baked on Friday. The folks at the Kansas City Business Council hope the cookie will go into the Guinness Book of World Records. The giant cookie was cut this morning into 1,000-square-foot sections and will be sold for $5 each. The money will go to charities. Doesn't that make you hungry? Going to need got... a big glass of milk to go with that cookie. <laughs> well, actually, they donated milk, too, so <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I'd hate to see that cookie crumble. Oh, boy. <laughs> That one. But anyway, I'd really hate to be on the roof of Grizzly, Washington Grizzly Stadium next weekend. We've got the Grizz victory forecast for you, and here it is. Scattered snow showers. This is the latest word, and brr. 13 <laughs> degrees, the expected game time temperature. Occasional snow around Missoula. So, uh, so bundle up. Yes. Get out the scarves and the mittens and the earmuffs. And Everything. All right. Thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good night. Good night. See you.